Welcome to Middle School Central Teaching with Dwell Community Church. I'm Brad Default, and we're continuing in Philippians chapter 1, where Patty Young left off last time. And today we are talking about three things that cannot be quarantined, that even if you are stuck at home, you could still experience these three amazing things. But first, where are we in the Bible? I use that word, Philippians. What's a Philippians? Well, there was an ancient city called Philippi, and the people who lived in that city were called Philippians, like the people who live in Ohio are called Ohioans. Now, a long time ago, just a few years after Jesus had died and raised from the dead, they had never heard about him until this guy Paul showed up at their city. Paul used to be the greatest enemy of Christianity until Jesus appeared to him. And then he became the greatest teacher in Christianity, and he shows up to Philippi, tells them about Jesus, and they believe it. Some of them do anyways, enough to start a church. And Paul doesn't just start a church, he starts a lot of trouble. He gets arrested because the people there, the authorities, didn't like what he was teaching. And so Paul left there and went somewhere else and got arrested someplace else. Went somewhere else and got beaten there for telling them about Jesus. This is just what Paul did. Went to different places, told them about Jesus, and got in a lot of trouble for it. That's where we are in our story now. Paul is under house arrest. And we saw from Patty last time that even while under house arrest, Paul still had joy and confidence. How in the world could he be in such a terrible situation and have such a great attitude? Could it just be the power of positive thinking that when you are really down, when your life is terrible, just smile. Just think happy thoughts. Just be really, really, okay, not, not, not that happy. Just be really happy even though your life sucks. No, that's not it. That's not how we can have joy, and that's not how Paul had joy either. We saw last time that Paul was able to have joy because of the good news. The good news is summarized here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, just five little words. Christ died for our sins. Sins, those are our bad choices. Those are the things we do or think or say that hurt each other and turn against God. And we are supposed to die for the things that we do wrong. But Jesus showed up and when he died, he took on the penalty for everything we have done wrong. And that means that if we put our trust in him, if we say, yes, I want that for me, then we get the forgiveness that he offers and we get eternal life. Our sin is taken away and we get to live with God in perfection forever. And in this life, we get to have a relationship with God. So when the Bible talks about joy, when Paul talks about his joy, it's not saying that things are bad, but think happy thoughts. That's not the way it is. Joy in the Bible is this. Because of Jesus, things are good. And we should think about that. Now, you might still have problems. Paul certainly did. He was literally chained up all the time at this point in his life, but he still has joy. So because of the good news, he has an eternity of awesome to look forward to. And because we can look forward to that in the future, we can have joy now. And not only that, we can also experience some pretty amazing things even if we're stuck at home. Paul was under house arrest. He was stuck at home. And we're going to see in these passages, he was still able to experience three awesome things. Here's what they are. Philippians 1 verses 7 to 9, he says, So it is right that I should feel as I do about all of you, for you have a special place in my heart. You share with me the special favor of God, both in my imprisonment and in defending and confirming the truth of the good news. So Paul is saying, it's like you're here with me in prison 
because we are about this same thing. The most important thing in my life is that people get this message. And to see that that's important for you and that we are working together here, it forms this bond. It's awesome. And he goes on and he says, God knows how much I love you and long for you with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. He says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more. So clearly this is something that cannot be stopped even though Paul is stuck in house arrest. When he says, how much I love you, that is love between us. If you're following God and you're doing it with other people, which is the way it should be, it forms this bond and that bond is still there even if we're apart. But notice Paul says, not just that I love you, I long for you. That's when you miss something that you don't have. So he would prefer to be there with them just like we would while we're at this stay at home order. It'd be great to be able to meet in person but even while we can't, we can still have this love between us and there's still things we could do while apart. Like what? We could do what Paul is doing here. That is writing to people. The technology Paul had at that time was pen and paper. You could do the same thing or you could use whatever device you're using right now to watch this video to communicate with someone else that, you, that is a partner. Or let's say you think about your life and you're like, who is my partner in following God? It's like, I'm in a home group with other people, but I don't know if I really like, are we really following God together? I don't know if I have that strong of a bond with people. You could build that bond even now. I feel like I've been experiencing this in my adult home group, that my friendships with people are getting stronger as we talk about our lives, even while we're apart. You could experience that now. You could also do what Paul does in verse 9. That is, pray for them. It doesn't matter how far apart you are. That, that's something you can do to make a difference in someone's life. And last, you could share things with them. Notice Paul is writing this letter to them, and he doesn't just say, do this, do that, don't do this other thing. He says, here's what's going on with me, because people want to know. This is a hard time for many of us. And if it's a hard time for you, you should reach out to the people, the other believers in your life, people you're following God alongside, maybe the leaders of your home group, maybe other students in your home group. You could share with them even while we're apart. Here's another thing you could do even while we're apart. Paul says, I pray that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding, for I want you to understand what really matters so that you may lead blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. That word blameless just means without any big, huge, terrible mistakes. He's talking about what's happening in your mind, even if nothing else is happening. We can be transformed in our minds. And he goes on about this. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation. Most of the time when you see the word fruit in the Bible, you could replace it with the word result because that's what it means. Think of it like an apple, which is a fruit, is the result of the apple tree. It comes from the apple tree. So he's saying there's things that should come from our salvation. The fact that we know God, what result is going to come from that? He tells us right here, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ for this will bring much glory and praise to God. This is another thing that can't be stopped just because we're stuck in our homes, and that is God working in us, our spiritual growth. So if you think of this as a time where your life is on pause, and later on you're gonna get back to living, get back to doing stuff, you could be missing out. Because you could come out of this stay-at-home order time, you could come out of this pandemic era of life with more knowledge and with stronger character than you had before. He talks about growing and he says, may this always be the case. So that means it can't be stopped no matter what is happening in our lives. So you might think that's what I do when I go to my home group, when I go to cell group or home church. Well, what about now, even while we're apart? There's ways you could grow. You could learn, you could devote some time to learning God's word during this time. 
I know a guy who's making YouTube video Bible studies and releasing them every weekday. You could watch those and read the passage that we cover. Right now we're doing a study in the book of Ephesians, which is awesome. Just takes a little bit of time and you might already be on YouTube. So give it a shot. You could learn something. Or even better, try reading the Bible on your own. You can do it. Even if you just get a little bit out of it, that's still really good. I suggest starting in the book of John. It's a little confusing because it's not 1 John. It's actually before 1 John. Go figure. 1 John is actually a more confusing book. John is one of the more clear, easy to understand books. Just try to read a little bit a day or even just a little bit a week and you could learn and grow during this time. Another way you could grow while you're stuck at home is to do something hard. Think of something that God might want you to do that just seems like impossible for you, okay? You are stuck at home with people who are probably really getting on your nerves, right? But what could you do for one of them? What could you do for your annoying sibling? What would be meaningful to them? What could you play or do with them if they're younger? What could you say to them? How could you tell them that you care? You're like, I'm thinking of some things, but there's a problem here because those are torture. I don't want to do those things at all. Okay, it may be torture at first, but if you stick with it and if you keep trying, you'll find that your character grows. This is what the Bible says, that persevering, sticking with it, leads to character. That's one of the ways that God grows us. So don't think of it as a chore to do something with your annoying sibling. Think of it as a way to level up spiritually. And here's our last one, something else that can't be quarantined. Paul says to them, I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has sucked. Nope, that's not what he says. Everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. Can you believe Paul's attitude here? This is mind blowing. He's saying, let's look on the bright side of the fact that I am in literal chains. Because the fact that I'm here means more people have heard about Jesus. How does that work? He says, everyone here, including the whole palace guard, the guys that he's chained to, remember? They know that I'm in chains because of Christ. So he's stuck with one person. He tells them about Jesus. He says, and because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. So they see Paul's example. They see, see that he is willing to suffer in order to tell people about Jesus, and that gives them courage to do the same. So this is something else that can't be stopped. Even if we're locked up, even if we're stuck at home, no matter what is happening, it is God working through us, spreading the good news to other people, getting out the message that God loved us enough to send Jesus for us, and because of that, we can have eternal life. I bet if you thought for 30 seconds, you could think of three ways right off the top of your head that you could share this message with someone else even while you're stuck in your house. So let's wrap up. We see that we can find joy where we are, no matter where we are, because of the good news. And on top of that, there are some awesome things that we can experience and do even if we find ourselves stuck at home. We see these things can't be quarantined. That is our love for each other. So who could you write to? Who could you text? Who could you pray for? Also, that God works in us. God can grow us. How can you come out of this time with more knowledge and a stronger character? What's a way you could learn? What's a hard thing you could do and get used to and allow God to change you from the inside out? Also, God's work through us, spreading his good news out to other people. Are there folks that you know that you could hit up online, over the phone, people you could meet online, you could tell them that God loves them and sent Jesus to die for them? Obviously, do it in a conversational way. Don't just preach at them, but let's get this message out there. So that's what we've got for Philippians chapter 1, verses 7 to 14. 
And if you are watching this with a group online, I've got some discussion questions for you. You might not have time to get to all of them, so maybe just pick out a few. But even if you're watching this by yourself, I would encourage you to look at these questions and think through your answers to them, because that'll help God's Word get stuck in your head. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time.